Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to this week's EKG Case of the Week for September 22nd, 2014. You know, I have to admit, I am suffering from some serious jet lag right now. Literally, just a few hours ago, I got off an airplane just returning from the Mediterranean EKG Cruise Conference that we conducted. It was sponsored by Florida Emergency Physicians. We've been doing some EKG conferences for them for the past uh, eight to 10 years or so. And this year, as I mentioned uh, a couple of months ago, I guess, this year we decided to take things on the road. So we went to the Mediterranean and cruised around and did 13 hours of CME conference time focused on advanced electrocardiography. We did have a little fun. We had a chance to stop off in Florence and check out some sites and in Rome and uh, where else? We went to Pisa and the Island of Love, as they say, uh, Capri, which had some amazing, amazing sites, and also to Pompeii. This is Mount Vesuvius at sunrise. So we got a chance to see some really amazing things, had a lot of fun, and also got to spend a lot of time talking about something that I love, and that is electrocardiography. For anybody that missed it, all of those lectures are actually videotaped on eMed Home. And if you want to catch up with what you missed on that cruise, you can go to www.emedhome.com and check out the premier ECG workshop. And uh, it is uh, 10 CME credits for about eight hours of video time. And yes, that is just a shameless plug for this particular conference um, or for this particular online CME product. Anyway, let's get on to this week's EKG case of the week. This was actually sent to me this past week while I was on the ship. And uh, it was it also went around Twitter just a bit, although there wasn't a lot of discussion on Twitter, which is great because we have a chance to discuss the case now. And this case was sent all the way from Cotter. And I think this is the first case I've gotten from that country. It was sent by an emergency medicine specialist medical and medical toxicologist, Dr. Jalal Al SI, and I hope I'm getting your name right, but thank you, Jalal, for sending this particular case. And I don't know if uh, if Jalal was taking care of this patient or perhaps a colleague was, but it was a 57 year old woman who whose main issue is a history of metastatic lung cancer. And this woman is on chemotherapy for the lung cancer, although hasn't had chemotherapy in a week or two. Vitals were stable, and she was complaining of some palpitations on and off. I don't know if there was palpitations at the time of the EKG. Maybe, maybe not. But here's the 12 lead EKG. And at first glance, you kind of look at this and say, well, there's an obvious reason for the palpitations, right? I mean, she is in, well, let me change the color of that. She's in polymorphic VTAC, kind of looks like torsade. Now, technically, we don't call it torsade unless we're pretty sure there's a prolonged QT, right? So just to recap, remember, torsade, torsade de point as the French say, although they have a better pronunciation than I do. Uh, but torsade is a type of polymorphic VTAC, which is associated with the prolonged QT. So I'm just going to call this polymorphic VTAC and not call it torsade because I don't know what the QT is. But anyway, bottom line is this is an ugly looking rhythm and this can account for palpitations. Although I did say that her vitals were stable. That's a bit odd given this EKG. And the other interesting thing about this 12 lead is looking at lead three, there's a pretty normal QRS and there and there also. And in fact, looking down the strip, it kind of looks like there's a normal complex there and um, maybe there and there and there. And then the other interesting thing that you'll notice is that Lead three looks pretty good, and yet lead two and lead one in that area show the what appears to be the polymorphic VTAC. Now recall that the three strips here are all run simultaneously. So whenever you see an, a complex here, that corresponds to this area, and that complex corresponds to that, and this corresponds to that, and it doesn't make sense at all why a patient would be in polymorphic VTAC in lead one and lead two, but not in lead three also, right? That doesn't make sense. Maybe this is just artifact. Well, how do you know? Well, we've identified 
some normal complexes here. So let's just map that out. Let's see if there's normal complexes that actually march all the way through this ugliness, right? Well, if you get your calipers and you march this out, it actually marches out very, very regularly into all of these other suspicious looking complexes as well. This patient actually has sinus rhythm marching all the way through this 12 lead EKG. And that means that all of this junk is really just artifact. And it will be very, very easy to mistake this patient for having true polymorphic VTAC. And if the patient happens to be taking a nap, for example, you might even shock the patient. That's not gonna be good for your patient satisfaction scores. I'll tell you that. It's also not gonna be good for the patient. So what do you do? I mean, sometimes it's difficult to distinguish between true polymorphic VTAC or sometimes VTAC versus artifact. In fact, back in December 2011, one of the very first video cases we did, if you go way back on the website, was this case. This was a patient that actually was diagnosed with presumed torsade or polymorphic VTAC. And uh, the patient fortunately didn't get shocked but there was uh, a bit of a workup for polymorphic VTAC. And it turned out that this was nothing more than artifact. You know, they thought that the patient had a big run of torsade or polymorphic VTAC. And in reality, that's just all artifact. You kind of notice that there are some complexes that uh, they kind of look normalish that are marching all the way through. And sure enough, they do map out perfectly regularly. If this were polymorphic VTAC, you shouldn't have any complexes like that marching out. And over here where it normalizes, this maps out perfectly. Get your calipers if you don't believe me. It maps out perfectly with everything else. And that means this patient has sinus rhythm marching all the way through this strip and there's no way you can have sinus rhythm superimposed on top of polymorph VTAC. That means the polymorph VTAC is not polymorph VTAC. It's just plain old artifact. And that's exactly what's going on here with this case as well. So be careful about this. This is not an uncommon thing. There are many cases where patients with artifact are mistakenly diagnosed as having VTAC or polymorph VTAC or torsade. I've seen two cases where patients actually got admitted and worked up for VTAC and it turned out that it was just plain old artifact that was misread. In fact, this is such a, um, well, it's, it's not something that you see every day, but it's not uncommon at all. It's common enough that in one of my favorite journals, the Journal of Electrocardiography, they actually have a regular series of uh, image, uh, you know, self-tests where some of the editors will put artifact cases in there and teach you about how to recognize artifact because so often it is misdiagnosed as torsade or polymorph VTAC or, or VTAC. Let's take a look at true torsade. This was sent by Dr. Bob Hoffman, who is the director of the New York City Poison Center at Bellevue Hospital. This is probably the most famous poison center in the entire world. And Bob Hoffman is one of the most well-known toxicologists in the world. And by the way, just a fantastic person. I've got a chance to know him uh, as a friend over the years. And he's incredibly smart and incredibly funny and a fantastic teacher. Um, anyway, he sent this case to me just a few months ago. This was a Seroquel overdose. Seroquel is better known by the, or probably not as well-known, Seroquel's the name that oftentimes is used, but the, the generic name is quietopine. This is a mood stabilizer type of drug, which happens to prolong the QT. And this patient, after the overdose, went into what appears to be torsade. Now, actually, when Bob first sent this case to me, I was looking at some of these complexes thinking, well, maybe this is another case of, of artifact that was missed. But the thing is, if you actually map these complexes, they don't map out. Um, you can't map them if you try to map it out, use your calipers if you don't believe me. It won't map out. And then on top of that, the ugliness, the torsadi appearance, that's a real word, by the way, the torsadi appearance exists in all of the leads um, when you look up and down. So it's not just, for example, in lead one and two and then missing in three. It's in all of the leads 
and you do, you're do you not able to map out a regular rhythm. This is actually torsade by the circle overdose. This case was sent by Dr. Mel Herbert. Uh, many of you know Mel. He is the person who created and runs EM Rap, which is a fantastic podcast. He also runs the Essentials Conference in Las Vegas every year. Once again, fantastic conference. And his uh, company, by the way, I'll put a plug in for him, www.hippoem.com. Uh, he has a company called Hippo Emergency Medicine, and that is kind of the umbrella organization that oversees EM Wrap and Essentials and a bunch of other educational products. Go to that website, check it out. There's a lot of great learning there. Anyway, I don't know the clinical scenario behind this case, but uh, this patient sure as heck has uh, another example of polymorph VTAC, and there's no artifact here. You cannot map any sinus rhythm through this if you look even if you look very carefully there's nothing that maps through this whereas again you look back at the the case that we started with you can definitely see these complexes that march out all the way through and, and so on so um anyway it's kind of an interesting case and uh, an important case because the last thing that you want to do is to over treat somebody that just has artifact by the way if you ever want to play a uh, kind of a funny joke on some of your nurses or colleagues. Just go in the room of one of your patients, wait till they're asleep, and then take one of their leads off. When they're on the monitor, take one of their chest leads off and just slowly shake it in the air. And you will induce that same type of pattern. You will induce uh, torsad, a tor torsad type pattern. All the bells and alarms will start going off. People will come running into the room with a crash cart. And uh, well, I, I think it's kind of funny. Maybe you won't. Anyway, um, be on the lookout for artifact. When you see what looks like polymorphic VTAC or VTAC, the first thing you always do is look at the patient. Do a quick assessment of the patient. If the patient's just chilling, just laying there watching TV, if the patient's fine, chances are it's not polymorphic VTAC because the patient is not going to look fine. They're not going to be stable with polymorphic VTAC. If they're unstable, don't hesitate. Just go right to shock them or treat them accordingly. Um, so don't spend a lot of time looking over the, the 12 lead and looking for artifact or things that map out if the patient's unstable. But if the patient's stable, take the extra 5 or 10 seconds to really scrutinize that 12 lead and see if there are uh, normal looking complexes that do map regularly across the rhythm. And if it is, then you're, you're probably just dealing with artifact. Artifact is not uncommon. Again, it is something that gets misdiagnosed often. And this is one of those things that you've got to know how to distinguish from the true malignant dysrhythmia. So anyway, that was kind of a fun case, um, short case, but fun case and a very important case. My thanks once again to Jalal for sending this case to us and sharing it with the world. And I hope that was helpful to all of you. Until next week, everyone, take care.